In this problem, we're going to examine some related rates. We have ship A traveling due west toward Lighthouse Rock. Here's ship A, it's traveling west, and it's traveling at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Then we have ship B traveling due north. So here's ship B traveling north at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. So ship B is moving farther away from the lighthouse. Ship A is moving closer to the lighthouse. X represents the distance between ship A and the lighthouse at time t, and Y is the distance between ship B and the lighthouse at time t. The first thing we want to find is the distance in kilometers between ship A and ship B. So let's represent that with the variable, and I'll just use a z. We have a right triangle with sides x, y, and z. We want to find the distance when x is 4 and y is 3. When x is 4 and y is 3, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side, which would be the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, or 5 x is measured in kilometers, y is measured in kilometers, and z is also measured in kilometers. So the answer to part A would be 5 kilometers. Part B asks us to find the rate of change in kilometers per hour of the distance between the two ships when x is 4 and y is 3. We know that ship A is traveling at a rate of 15 kilometers per hour, and that's represented by x. So that rate would be dx dt. Because the value of x is getting smaller, it's decreasing, we know that our rate should be negative. So we're going to represent that as negative 15 kilometers per hour. Ship B is traveling further away, so the value of y is increasing. dy dt, therefore, is positive 10 kilometers per hour. And we want to find the rate that the distance between them is changing. So we're trying to find dz dt at the instant when x is 4 and y is 3. We need an equation that relates our variables x, y, and z. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And now we'll take the derivative implicitly with respect to time t. The derivative of x squared with respect to t is 2x dx dt. The derivative of y squared with respect to the variable t is 2y dy dt equals and the derivative of z squared with respect to time t is 2z dz dt. Now we substitute all of our known values. We have 2, x is 4, dx dt is negative 15, plus 2 times y is 3, dy dt is positive 10, at this moment in time, z is 5, and dz dt is the quantity we're trying to find. So now we simply solve this equation for dz dt. We get negative 120 plus 60 equals 10 times dz dt, so I'm going to divide both sides by 10, and that's going to give me negative 6. So dz dt equals negative 6, and now my units for z are kilometers, and my units for t are hours, so my rate is negative 6 kilometers per hour. In part c, theta represents the angle shown in the figure here. So I'll draw in our other triangle here. 
we want to find the rate of change of theta in radians per hour when x is 4 and y is 3, so at that same moment in time. Now we need a new equation that relates theta to our other variables. We can say the tangent of theta equals y over x, since y is the opposite side and x is the adjacent side, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now we take the derivative with respect to time. The derivative of tangent theta with respect to the variable t is secant squared theta d theta dt. The derivative of y over x, we'll use quotient rule. Derivative of the top, the derivative of y is 1 dy dt times the bottom x minus the top y times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of x is 1 dx dt. All of that over the bottom squared. And now we substitute in our known values. So we need to find secant of theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Going back to our diagram, cosine would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine is 4 over 5. That means its reciprocal secant is 5 over 4. So we have 5 over 4 squared times d theta dt equals dy dt when x is 4 and y is 3 is 10. x is 4, y is 3. dx dt at that moment in time is negative 15 over x squared, so over 16. Now we just solve for d theta dt. d theta dt equals, on the right we have 40 plus 45, that's 85 over 16, and I'm going to divide both sides by 5 fourths squared. 5 fourths squared is 25 over 16. Dividing by 25 over 16 is the same as multiplying by 16 over 25. And so d theta dt equals 85 over 25, and that reduces to 17 over 5. For our units, theta is measured in radians and t, our time, is measured in hours. So our units are radians per hour. In this next problem, we have a container in the shape of an open right circular cone. The height of the container is 10 centimeters, and the diameter of the opening is also 10 centimeters, and that means the radius of the opening is 5 centimeters. Water in the container is evaporating so that its depth h is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 tenths centimeters per hour. That's the rate of change of the depth h, so I would represent that symbolically as dh dt. dh dt is negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. We want to find the volume in the container when little h is 5. I can create a right triangle inside my cone here, and I'm going to recopy that out here. and I'm looking for the volume when this height is 5. Notice that we have a similar triangle in the large container, and so I can set up a ratio, the ratio of little r to h is equal to the ratio of 5 to 10. So my smaller radius to my smaller height, because this is larger triangle is similar, will be equivalent to the larger radius to the larger height. This equation relates r and h. We're looking for the volume when h is 5. 
So if I replace h with 5 right here, I have r over 5 equals 5 over 10. And I can solve this equation for r by multiplying both sides by 5. I get r equals 25 over 10, which reduces to 5 over 2. So when little h is 5, little r is 5 over 2. Now let's find our volume. The formula for the volume of a cone is 1 3rd pi times radius squared, and I just found that the radius is 5 over 2, times h, and we're given that the value of h is 5. Simplifying this, we get 1 3rd pi times 25 over 4 times 5, or 125 over 12 pi, and because this is volume, our units are cubic centimeters. In part b, we're asked to find the rate of change of the volume in the container with respect to time t when h is 5 centimeters. The rate of change of the volume would be dv dt. So we want to find dv dt when little h is 5. And we already know that when little h is 5, little r is 5 over 2. We may or may not need to use that. Now we need to write an equation that relates the known rate and the rate we're trying to find. So the rate that we know is dh dt, and the rate that we're trying to find is dv dt. I want to write an equation that relates v and h. So I have v equals 1 3rd pi r squared h, but I want my equation only to have the variables v and h. I can still do the problem if I keep the r squared in the equation, but it becomes a little more complicated because then when I take the derivative, notice on the right we have two variables multiplied together, so we would have to use the product rule to take that derivative. And when we take the product rule with respect to time, we're going to end up with a dr dt, which is not given in the problem. We can do a little extra work to find dr dt, but I think it's more efficient if we just rewrite our equation for v strictly in terms of h. And we can do that using the proportion we saw earlier in these similar, with these similar triangles. We know that the ratio of little r to little h equals 5 to 10. And so if I want to eliminate the r from my equation here, I simply solve this equation for r. And I get r equals 5h over 10, which reduces to h over 2. And now that I know that r equals h over 2, I can substitute that value in for r in my equation. So I'm going to rewrite my volume equation. The volume is 1 3rd pi instead of r squared. I'm substituting h over 2 in for r, so I have h over 2 squared times h. Now my volume equation becomes 1 3rd pi times h cubed over the 2 gets squared, so it's over 4. So it's 1 12th times pi h cubed. Now I have an equation for volume strictly in terms of my variable h. I'm ready to take my derivative with respect to time t. The derivative of v is dv dt. The derivative of 1 12th pi h cubed, the 1 12th pi is a constant, so it will remain a constant multiplier in my derivative. The derivative of h cubed is 3h squared times dh dt. And now I can plug in my known values. I'm trying to find dv dt. And I know at this moment h is equal to 5, so h squared would be 25. 
and I know that dh dt is negative 3 over 10. That was given in the problem. And now I just need to simplify. I can reduce the 3 over 12 to 1 over 4, and then I have negative 75 over 40 pi, which reduces to 15 pi over 8. That is dv dt, and the units for v are centimeters cubed. The units for t is hours, so my rate is 15 pi over 8 centimeters cubed per hour. For the final part of the question, we're asked to show that the rate of change of volume, and here's our rate of change of volume, we're asked to show that this is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. If we go back to the original diagram, here's the exposed surface area of the water. So it does, is a circle, and the surface area right there would be pi r squared the area of that circle. So we want to show our rate of change of volume, dv dt, and I'm going to simplify this. The 3 over 12 can reduce to 1 over 4. So we have 1 over 4 pi h squared times dh dt, and we know dh dt is negative 3 over 10. So this is equal to negative 3 over 40 pi h squared. Now we want to show it's somehow equal to a constant times pi r squared, meaning we don't want an h in our equation, we want an r. So now we're going to substitute out the h. We have this equation over here that relates r and h to each other. Now I want to get rid of the h, so I'm going to solve this equation for h. If I cross multiply, I get 5h equals 10r, and dividing both sides by 5, I get h equals 2r. If h equals 2r, then I can substitute 2r in for h, so that my dv dt now can be expressed as negative 3 over 40 times pi, and instead of h, I'm going to use 2r squared. So it's 2 squared is 4, and then r squared. So we get negative 3 times 4 over 40 pi r squared, which is negative 3 over 10 pi r squared. Pi r squared is the exposed surface area, and here is our constant of proportionality, negative 3 over 10. So we have shown that the exposed surface area is directly proportional to dv dt, the rate of change of the volume.